I'm Johnny Price with the Caleb Group in Greenville, South Carolina, and this is our fifth segment of the series, C.S. Lewis on Heaven. Now, there are some questions that have to be addressed, such as, what is eternal life? What does it look like? When does it start? Christians talk about having moved from death to life. What is that all about? Well, in order to address these questions, we first of all have to define a couple of terms, such as death and life. The most succinct, accurate, precise definition of death is a single word, separation. It's not annihilation, it's not non-existence. You and I are eternal beings, and we will exist for all eternity in a conscious state. So that when I die physically, who I am will be separated from the physical world. But there is another type of death that we need to be concerned about, and that is spiritual death. When someone is dead spiritually, who they are is separated from God. Well, actually, that has to be tweaked just a bit. When someone is spiritually dead, who they are is separated from the comforting presence of God. Because it's really tough to be separated from one who is omnipresent. And then there's life. How are we to understand and define that? Well, picture, if you will, a post, a plant, a pet, and a person. The post is not alive. It is inanimate. The plant is alive. Now, what's the difference? The difference is that the plant has the capacity to take from its external environment such things as it needs into itself in order to be transformed, to grow. To live. You take a pet, and a pet is experiencing life, but a pet is experiencing life on a completely different level than the plant, because it has a greater capacity for taking in from its external environment that which it needs, not only nutrients, but sights and sounds and incorporating those into itself so that it is changed, transformed, living. Now, a person has an even greater capacity to experience life because it has a greater capacity to take that which is in its external environment and incorporate it into itself sights, sounds, nutrients, ideas, to be transformed, to grow, to live. Now, if a person moves from spiritual death to spiritual life, it is because they have taken into themselves, from their external environment, God himself through Jesus Christ. And they are now no longer separated from him and are spiritually alive and are experiencing life on a much greater level than they were 
previously. Now, what this means then is that you can have someone who is physically alive and spiritually alive. That's a Christian. You can have someone who is physically alive and spiritually dead. A non-Christian. You can have someone who is physically dead and spiritually alive. And here we begin to get at the heart of what eternal life is all about. And tragically, you can also have someone who is physically dead and spiritually dead. And whatever else it means, that is at the heart what hell is all about. Now, when does eternal life begin? As soon as an individual commits themselves to Jesus Christ, accepting Him as their Savior. When does heaven begin? The same time. Uh, C.S. Lewis writes about this in his book, The Great Divorce. Now the setup is, in this fantasy, there has been a bus from hell. People from hell have been transported to the very edge of heaven. And loved ones and friends from heaven are going to come out and try to persuade them to go in. And the narrator has a guide that tells him, Both good and evil, when they are full grown, become retrospective. Not only this valley, but all their earthly past will have been heaven to those who are saved. Not only the twilight in that town, but all their life on earth too will then be seen by the damned to have been hell. This is what mortals misunderstand. They say of some temporal suffering no future bliss can make up for it, not knowing that heaven, once attained, will work backwards and turn even that agony into a glory. And of some sinful pleasure, they say, but let me have this, and I'll take the consequences. Little dreaming how damnation will spread back and back into their past and contaminate the pleasure of the sin. Both processes begin even before death. The good man's past begins to change so that his forgiven sins and remembered sorrows take on the quality of heaven. The bad man's past already conforms to his badness and is filled only with dreariness. That is why, at the end of all things, when the sun rises here and the twilight turns to blackness down there, the blessed will say, we have never lived anywhere except in heaven. And the lost, we were always in hell. And both will speak truly. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life.